one. I know. Sounds good, isn't it? Trust me, you only need one exercise. So, grab your exercise books out. We're going to do. Shh, way down. Way down. I know so every year when I do this, all the kids are always like, whoa, but then you realize what, what I mean. Why? You don't have to do four exercises, you only need to do one. And it, it, it takes everything in account. Unless you want to do all four, then by all means, do it. Okay, I, I'm not encouraging it, I'm just saying. All four of them have only one concept. You get that concept, then you can move on to E, which ties everything together. Okay? So, you can do, you know, really, transformations, you only got three things. You got translation, reflection, and dilation. That's it. D is just putting them all together. So, technically, if you really want, all you have to do is just 3D. But that's providing that you understand how translations, dilations, reflections work. Okay, so that's what I mean. There's only one concept. You only need to do one exercise. You don't have to do A, B, C to get it. You only need to do D once you get it. Yeah? So here we go. We're going to start off. Uh, I, those who were in my methods class last year, I would have explained this. Um, maybe not to too much detail, but hopefully this time it makes more sense. Okay? But here we go. Transformations. Now, these are the graphs that you learned in year 11. Okay? Do I have another one? No? That's it. Okay. In year 11, you learned these graphs. You had 1 on x is your rectangular hyperbola. You had truncus, 1 on x squared. You had e to the x. You had log e of x. And you have square root of x. Now, all those functions there, you had to learn how to translate them or transform them so you can move it up, down, move it left, right. And we would have done a bit of it in chapter 1 where I explained to you clearly plus 1 means it shifts the graph up by 1. When I say all that, not all of us will understand. And so today's, oh, this chapter is all about getting you to understand how to read when it goes up, down, left, right, and why it does it across through all these graphs. Because it's just the one type of theory, and that theory can be applied to all these functions. Okay? Um, and last year with my uh, year 11 group, so in my methods group, I would have taught them from the very beginning quadratics, and I taught them how to transform every one of those graphs. So it should be more familiar to them, but for you guys, the aim is to get you to proficiency after this session. Okay? So here we go. These are your graphs. I call them basic graphs because you haven't changed anything. You're not moving up or down. You're just doing 1 on x, this is what it looks like. It's the square root of x, that's what it looks like. We haven't changed it to move left, right, up, down, dilate, or reflect. We haven't done any of that, okay? That's why I call them the basic graphs. Now, the concept of uh, your transformation, the easiest one to get is translations. Okay, translations means moving left, right, and up, and down. Now, this is what it means. They say vertical translation means going up and down, right? We call it k. Now, it makes sense that if you have an x and y coordinate, Okay, you have an x and y coordinate. If you want to move a coordinate up or down, you obviously add or subtract the y value. True? So if you think about it, if I drew an axis here and I gave you the point 1, 1, which is this coordinate here, so that's 1, 1. True? If I want to bring that coordinate down, if I want this coordinate to go down by 1, which ends up being at 1, 0, See, the only way to get 1, 0 is I had to change my y value. How did I say down? I would say 1, take away 1, give me 0. That's logical, true? Yeah, so if you change the y values, so here we go, I'm going to just put a blue line so you can see. If I just said subtract 1 from the y, that would bring the coordinate down 1. So if you can change one coordinate, that means you can change infinitely many coordinates. If you subtract 1 for every coordinate, everything goes down 1. That's why in a quadratic graph, which normally looks like this, that's an x squared graph. And if you then said, take all those y values, so it's y equals to x squared, according to this, they say, subtract 1 from the y. Subtract 1 from the y, and you can see y x squared minus 1. See, this is y. If I said y minus 1, it would just be the same thing as saying x squared minus 1. Because x squared is y. So if I just replace that, that becomes y minus 1. And y minus 1 would mean drop down by 1. That's why the graph of x squared minus 1 looks like this. True? Okay, that's what x squared minus 1 is. You drop it down, and it goes down by 1. All the coordinates move down by 1. Everything subtracts 1 in terms of the vertical values. Okay? Now, I want to show you later why 
Horizontal translation is a bit different, and I'm going to show you the technique. Once you know the technique, you can do it for dilations, reflections, and it all makes sense. Okay? Now here we go. Horizontal translation, you would say, if you add, it doesn't have to be h, it's just a certain amount to the x values, then obviously you're moving to the right. If you subtract a certain amount, then you're going to the left. That's horizontal translations. Vertical translations, you affect the y values, then you go up or down. Okay, so that makes sense. Now, this is the example I gave, so f of x equals x squared. If I want to move this to the right, the interesting thing is though, when you write it out, if I said I want to move it to the right by, let's say, 1, okay, you would say that the equation for it to move to the right by 1 is x minus 1 squared. Okay, now that's tricky because that's what we taught you last year in terms of reading the turning point form. This tells you a turning point that it moves to the right by 1 and up by k. Yeah, that's where the turning point is. Now, in the transformation equation, the question is, why is it when it was minus 1 for the y's, it goes down, but yet, if you want to move to the right, instead of plus 1, it's a minus 1. That's tricky. That's weird. Because we were so used to saying, all right, y equals x squared minus 1, this means down. Yet, when I give you y equals to x minus 1 squared, this doesn't mean left. This actually now means right. One. So the question is why? Okay, why is that why is that the case? And we can't just take it as a fact, okay, and I'm gonna show you why and how it works. Because once you understand translation, you can do the same technique for reflection dilation. That's why you don't have to do A, B, C, you can just do D. Okay? Now let's have a look. Let's take this. So reflection, I want you to copy this one down. So we know a couple of things. We learnt translation was X plus H or uh, y plus k. True, that will k will make it up, go down, up and down, whereas h will make it left and right. So what's reflection? This is what I want you to copy down. For well, reflection, when well, we say reflecting in x-axis, it basically means you're flipping on the x-axis. So for example, if I had uh, the coordinate 1, 1, if I'm flipping it on the x-axis, so imagine taking this coordinate and I'm flipping it on the x-axis. So this is my x-axis and I'm flipping it over there. What would the coordinates be? Instead of 1, 1, you will now get what? What would you get? 1, negative 1. Okay? So you can see if I flip on the x-axis, it now becomes 1, negative 1. So what has changed? The x-values didn't change. What changed? It was my y-values. 1 becomes negative 1. So that's why we say reflection on the x-axis it's a negative on the y values, okay? Whereas translation vertically was changes to the y values. Horizontally was changes to the x values, okay? Whereas if I now say reflection in the y axis, what do you think that would mean now? If you think about it logically, if I took this coordinate 1, 1, and I flipped it over the y axis, what would the new coordinates be? If I flipped it on the y axis, if I moved this across, reflected that way, what would the coordinates be now? Ben. Negative 1, 1. And so if you think about it, so from 1, 1, I now end up with negative 1, 1. So what has changed is clearly x. Y value is still the same, it's still 1, but what has changed is I put a negative on x. Okay, so that's what it means when you're flipping on the y axis, reflection on the y axis means you're affecting the x values. Reflection in the x axis, you are affecting the y values. What I don't want you to do is to memorize that. You see, a lot of students will try to memorize that. They're like, reflection x, okay, I picked the y. You know, don't. Try to think it the way I've sort of drawn the picture for you. If you just flip it, what's changing? See, it's, it's not the x. The x values aren't changing. It's the y values are changing. Whereas if you do it horizontally, you're flipping it horizontally, it makes sense by moving from here to here. It's the x values that are changing. The y values aren't. Okay, so I don't want you to memorize that. Think about it and make sense out of it when we say ref reflect in the x or reflect in the y axis. Cool? All right, now, let's do this. Now, if you didn't understand what I was trying to describe so far, this is my, in a nutshell, description, okay? When we say reflect in the x-axis, as we said, it is a negative on the y values. Now remember, f of x is the y values. So if I put a negative on the y, it's like saying negative of f of x. 
Whereas if I say reflect in the y-axis, then that's a reflection on the x value. So it's f of a negative x. How does that change things? So for example, if I gave you f of x as my equation that's an exponential, then by putting a negative on the function, it's just like saying negative of e to the x. Whereas if I say put a negative in front of the x, then how does that change the equation? I have e to the negative of x. See the difference between the two? The negative is either affecting the x coordinates or the negative is affecting the y coordinates. That's how you tell the difference. Okay, so from here on, it doesn't matter what equation I give you, you're just looking, is the negative on the x variable or is negative on the function? See, so if negative is on the function, that's a reflection in your x-axis. If the negative is on the x values, then that's changing on the y-axis. Okay, so I can give you something like this. I can say y equals to, whoa, whoa, what happened there? y equals to, let's say, negative sine of 2x. See, it doesn't matter. In this case here, my x variables are here. I'm not having a negative on the x variable, so this is a reflection on the y values. This negative is affecting the y values. That's why you'd say negative on the y values would be a reflection in the x-axis. If I want to change this to be a reflection on your y-axis, then I would put the negative there. See, by putting the negative next to the x, negative 2 times x, I'm affecting the x variables, then I am affecting the y variables. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's what I mean by the nutshell. Nutshell, it's negative on the x or negative on the y. Okay? Now, let's have a look. That was just the summary for you to see. Translation reflections, because that's one of the easiest ones to understand for dilation. Now, Let's look at this one. So I want you to copy this example down. Y equals e to the x. Let's say this is what I want. It says find the transformation equation if, so I want this equation to follow these transformations. So let's read it. What does y plus two tell me? Y plus two, what does that tell me again? What does that tell me? It goes up by. 2. So we know I want to change this equation to go up by 2. Now I've got a negative on the x. What does a negative on the x tell me? Reflection in the y. So I know, okay, so I want to reflect this graph in the y, and then I've got this plus 3. And that plus 3 is affecting my x variable. So plus 3, what would that do? To the right by 3, okay? So this is right by 3. Logically, this is what an exponential graph looks like. This is what it looks like. What I want is I want to reflect it in the y-axis. So this is what it looks like. Reflecting in the y-axis, this is what it will look like. So reflect in the y-axis, it will look like this. True? So that's reflecting the y-axis. <coughs> then I say up by 2. So that means I'm going to shift this graph up by 2. Okay, so I'm going to delete that. So it's up by 2. But then at the same time, I want to move that to the right by 3. So if I'm going to move that to the right by 3, maybe it'll be like something like that. So that's roughly my exponential graph so far. That's what I want. The question is, what's the equation? What's the new equation? That's what this is asking. They're saying find the transformation equation to represent that, because that's what I want. I want it to move to the right, up, and reflect it in the y-axis. Okay. Now, how do we do it? This is what I want you to copy down. So here we go. This is what we say. This is your original coordinates, and this represents all the coordinates in your exponential graph. What you're asking yourself now is, what if the, this is the old x, and I change it to a new x value? How do I do that? So they say, in this transformation, it says, whatever your old x coordinate is, I want you to put a negative in front of it. So if it was 3, it becomes negative 3. But after that, I want you to move to the right by 3. So after you reflect it, move it to the right by 3. Okay, so to get the new x coordinate, which we use x dash, to get the new x coordinate, we say take the old, reflect it, and then move to the right by 3. True? That's what we're saying there. I'm just dealing with the x coordinates. Now, x dash, that means the new x coordinate. Okay, so get the new, I get the old, reflect, and add 3. Anyone confused by that so far? Make sense? Good. So that means now if I want to look at my y values, I say, all right. Well, that means my old y, to get to my new y values, it would be take my old y and add 2. Okay? 
Now, if you're looking at my uh, working out here, what am I actually doing here? Why am I rearranging this to have x and then rearranging this to have y? What's the purpose? Can anyone figure it out? Because this is the technique, but I want you to think about it. Trent, sub it in. why do you have to sub it in? Why do I have to rearrange to sub it in? Why can't I just take this and sub it back in? Why? What's the reasoning? It is not the same thing, it's true. There's something more. Yes, Alessia? Yes. And this is now in relation to x as opposed to x dash. Yes. Because remember, x dash is the yes. new coordinates. Now, this is the key part, and this is where all the theory comes in. Think about it this way. Let's say this. You know how you've got your quadratic graph that looks like this? It's an x squared. True? Now, this is your graph for x squared. All the coordinates, when x is equal to 2, what does y equal to in this quadratic graph? 4. Yeah, 2 squared will give you 4. True? Now, if let's say I want the graph to move to the right by 1. Let's just do that. So let's say I move the graph to the right by 1. Now, you see, the graph is still the same shape. The graph is still the same shape. It's still the same quadratic graph. So that means my machine is still something squared. Yeah? Now, the problem is... At, instead of um, at x equals 1 here, instead of it being when x equals 1, if I sub 1 into the original equation, if I sub 1 in, if I put x equals 1, what will I get? One, because y is equal to 1 squared, which is 1. But looking at this green graph, is that true? So no, this is what I want, this is what I want. But if I put 1 in, actually I'm getting this coordinate. So the question is, how do I put 1 in, but still get 0? See, the only way to get 0, because this green coordinate here is 1, 0. So what they're saying is, I want to put x equals 1, and I still get y equals 2, 0 squared, which is 0. So logically, how do I get 0? If I put a 1 in, how does a 1 become a 0? Because at the end of the day, I'm going to square this value. I have to do something to this machine. So what am I changing? How do I change if I put a 1 in? 1 squared gives me 1. I don't want that. I want it to be 0. It has to be 1, 0. So what do I have to do? Not move it. Something about the number. What do you do with the number? If you've got a 1, how do you make it 0? Minus 1. You see, this is where the logic is. The logic is, if I said, whatever x is, if I put it in, it's always 1 more, 1 extra. So the only way to have the original shape is if you minus 1. See, 1 minus 1 will give you 0. 0 squared will give you 0. So if you put a 1 in, it will always work. So if I put a 1 in now, I will get this coordinate. I will get 1 and I will get 0. That's the idea. That's why the equation is x minus 1 squared so that you can move it to the right. Okay? Because you want to put, you want to keep the same shape. The only way to keep the same shape, which is squaring, the only way to keep the same shape is whatever numbers I put in, I don't want the same result. Okay, I'll show you another slide if that didn't make sense. The other slide might make it a bit more, so it makes more sense. Yeah, but that's the gist of the idea. So, having said that, the reason why we rearrange this is exactly what we just did. See, so I said to get to zero, you had to reverse it. If you add it, you have an extra one. Because you move across by one, you have an extra one. You have to reverse it. The only way to reverse it is minus one to get the original. Now it's the same thing here. See, this is your original. You have to times by negative and then add three to get to the new. So the only way to know what the original was is if you reverse it. So if you add a three, minus three. If you reflected it, unreflected. That's what this is. Unreflected and then minus three. Oh wait. Well, add three minus three. Yeah, because you reflected, it looks like it's adding three. Okay, but that's the reason why it's being reversed. All you're doing is you're saying to get the original, that's what you have to do to the new. Okay? You have to change the new to get the original. Just like what I did with you before, I said you had a 1, you need to make that a 0. So how did you make it a 0? You said reverse it. So instead of adding 1, you said minus 1. Same thing here, instead of 
reflecting that adding three, I'm now reflecting adding three. It just so happens to end up being the same. Okay? But but that's the goal. That's the goal. So if you have a look at this one, you say add two, you add a two. But if you want to get the original, you have to reverse it. So how do you reverse it? Minus two. So you take your new, subtract two, you get the original. Or get the original, add two, and you get the new. Does that make sense? Yeah, so if I got uh, two plus two, so original is two, two plus two is four. Right? Well, but to go back to <laughs> But to go <laughs> to go back to the original, you'd have to minus two. See if you add a two to get four, then four minus two will get you two again. Okay? That's the logic. That's the logic. So the technique is find the original y, because the function was the original y values. You originally had the shape, x and y coordinates. You have to rearrange it to get the original x and y's and I color coded it so you could see what I was doing there. So now that we've rearranged it, we can replace the equation y equals e to the x can now be replaced with y which is in green can be y dash minus 2 is equal to e to the instead of x which is in blue, I can replace that with negative x dash plus 3. True? Now here's the interesting thing, you know how we said before, why is it that when you move up and down it, it was positive and negative, it was fine, right? Whereas x, when, when I said x squared minus 1, that meant down 1. But funny enough, when we go to x minus 1, that didn't mean left. And I said, why was it like the opposite side? Why was it minus 1 becomes right by 1? The reason why the y values are not consistent is because of this. So you get up to this step, every time you sketch a graph, you never leave y with an extra negative 2, you always write y as a subject, meaning that you have y by itself. So if you have y by itself, right here, what you'll be doing is you're manipulating the equation, you take negative 2, and you add 2 on both sides. That's why plus 2 corresponds to up 2. But technically, it wasn't. It was a minus 2 to begin with, it's just that we rearrange the equation in terms of y. If we rearrange the equation in terms of x, then x would have been minus 3, yeah? Because we want uh, plus 3, sorry. We would want plus 3. If that makes sense of what I'm trying to say. Okay? So this here is our equation for the transformation we want. Okay? Yes? So in that scenario, we still do the y by 3, but this time we wrote it as y by 1 equals Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Exactly that. Yeah. And the only reason why this happens is because you're trying to get the original x value. Yeah, so you put in a 1, what you actually want is you're putting too much in now. How do you get the original? Subtract 1, yeah, and go backwards. Yeah, and that's going to be key understanding for dilation. So when you triple it, it'll be funny in your, in your equation, it'll look like a third. Whereas uh, in your dilations from your y, it's, 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 it seems like it's the same, yeah? But here we go. Let's try. I'm going to try to explain it with this other slide, okay? So forget about this one for now. Here we go. This was, this is what I was trying to explain just before with the quadratics. You know how I said xy coordinates to move to new x, new y from this corner to this coordinate. This is what we're doing. We're saying plus h amount. True? Now, according to this, if I put a number to it, because most of the time it's without the numbers we find it hard to understand, right? Let's put a number in it. If I add 2, 4, and I want to move it to 5, 4, what would you do? You would say add 3 to the x coordinate, add 3 to the x coordinate, and you get 5. True? So, if you wanted to get from 2, 4 to 5, 4, the transformation, let's say this is part of a quadratic equation. This is what I was saying before. If I sub in 2, this is just one corner on the quadratic graph. If I sub in 2 in the machine, I'm going to get 4. That's why it's 2, 4. But what's my goal? I want to sub in 5 and still get 4. That's what I want to do. If I want to move it across right, what I'm saying is when I put in 5, I should get the same result. And if I can do that for all coordinates, I technically move the graph to the right by 3. Yeah. So the question is, well, if this is my machine, I sub 2 in, I get 4. The problem is if I sub 5 in, I don't get 4. So if I sub 5 in, 5 squared will make it 25. So the question is, how do I sub 5 in to make sure that I still get 4? 
<laughs> no! What do you do, Aaron? Oh. Okay, cool. Ben. No, it's absolutely true. So this is what I'm asking. I want I want to sub in five, and you're right. I want to sub in five and still get four. And you're right, we want to go backwards now. We know to get four, you have to have two. So if I sub in five, how do I get two? Take three, which makes sense because you said here, add three. If I put in five in my equation, it should be like this now. If I put in a five, take three, this would work. See, this would work for all coordinates. If I sum in the five, I take three, I will get my four. If I do that for every coordinate, that essentially moves my graph to the right. That's why you would say here, if you add h, your equation, rearranging it, how do you get the new value from five? How do you get the original two? The only way is minus h. So you can see what I'm doing there. This is, if I put numbers over it, x dash was your your four, I oh, sorry, five. Five, this was two, and you added three. So if you want to go backwards, you would say five minus three equals two. See, that makes sense. So when you're doing that, it makes sense you're just working backwards to get that same value that you want. Bye down. Okay, that, that's the essential gist of it, why? You do the reverse to get the equation. All you're doing is you're manipulating when you're substituting in, because overall squaring will give you that shape. All you want to do now is manipulate what you put in to move the graph around. That's essentially what you're doing. Okay. Are you but yep, which which is the goal. So here, here, this is what I mean. So when you draw, when you draw the quadratic graph, this is what x squared is, which is the machine. All right, the machine is x squared. Your goal is that I don't want it in this position. Why does it have to be at x equals zero? It equals to zero. I don't want that. Why does it have to be at x equals two? I get four. What if I want to take exactly the same shape? Now the only way to get the same shape is if it's something squared. Okay, so if I want to have the same shape, but to the right, let's say that was my goal. I said I want it to be to the right by three. So that means when I put in a three, I want it to get you the same y coordinate. Or when you put in a five, you want it to still be four. Yeah. See so what I mean? So if I put in a three into this equation, how do I still get zero? The only way for it to work is, since I moved it to the three across, then subtract oh, three, oh, yeah. I will get the original. And that's what this is doing. You're just saying the new coordinate that you want, which is three, how do you get zero, which is the original? Because from three, it corresponds to zero. So how do you go back? The only way is, well, if you moved it forward, you go back, and that's how you get the original. So getting, to get the new minus how much you moved across, to give you the original is the goal. And if you do that for every coordinate for x equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, then everything's moved, technically, by keeping the same shape. Because what you want is something squared. Does that make sense? Yeah, and so it doesn't matter what a function is, we call it f of x. It could be an e to the x function, it could be a sine of x function, but that theory applies for all. That's why you can now do something like this. I'm just going to move it to this page. You can do. Let's say y equals uh, x minus 1 squared. That was to move a quadratic graph to the right by 1, true? Then you can also change, let's say, e to the x. If you want to move this basic graph to the right by 1, this is all you do. y equals e to the x minus 1. See, I'm just changing that x value. By changing the x value, that will move it to the right by 1. If I want to change a log graph, this is your original log graph. If I want to change that so that it moves to the right by one, same theory. I just need to affect my x values. That's it. See, if it was a quadratic, it was x squared, then it becomes x minus one squared. If this was e to the x, then it's e to the x minus one. That will move it to the right. This is my log e of x. The only thing I have to change is what I'm doing to the x. 
Yeah, originally I said x squared. So if it's a square root function, you'd say, what am I doing to the x? I'm square rooting it. If you want to move that to the right, then as we understood, it will be root of x minus 1. And the theory applies to all of them. You see, if I drew the square root graph, that's what I have. Let's say I want this. Whoops, sorry. It should be more like that. And what you can see is if this was 1, if this was 1, essentially, what are you trying to say? You're trying to say, when I put in x equals 1, I wish that that was the same as x equals 0. So how do you sub in 1 but get 0? 1 minus 1. That's why this one works. If I sub in 1 into this machine now, 1 minus 1 will be 0. Root of 0 will give me the original, which is that. So whatever you want for the x, you're affecting the x values. You're just moving backwards. So if you want to double it, then to reverse it, you'll be halving it. See what I mean? So if I want to double it, I wanted to you know, make this larger by a factor of 2, then to reverse the equation, I'd have to divide it by 2. See, because whatever number I put in, <coughs> then that's already doubled, okay? Because that's what I want. I already got it doubled, so the only way to get the original shape is I halve it. That's why last year, when you were doing your equations, you might see something like this. You might see something like that versus that. See, those two are different. This means I'm now, instead of stretching it, Double, this means it's the reverse of doubling. Yeah, so this means doubling on the x-axis. So what it does is it stretches out horizontally. This actually means halving it horizontally. Okay, because it's always the reverse. It's always the reverse. If it's minus in 1, then you were adding 1. If you were uh, times it by 2, then you're actually dividing it by 2. That's the goal. Okay? But before we get to that, let's practice on how to solve. Yeah, let's practice on how to solve. Here we go. Let's try doing this. Here we go. Whoops. Let's try this one, guys. I want you to find me the transformations involved. Now, if you look at this graph, what kind of function do I have? What's my basic graph? What's the equation? It's a e to the x, right? So this is what I know. This is my original graph, but I've changed a lot of things to this. Okay, what have I changed? I've got this plus 5, I've got this times negative 2, and in terms of my x values, I've got 3 minus 4x. So if I had to rearrange it, I can say this. I can say this 3 minus 4x is this yellow section. Everything else, this green and this green, is to do with my y values. True? Because in terms of my x values, I'm just doing times by negative 4, or times by 4, reflect it, and then add 3. That's what I'm doing to the x values. Whereas these two aren't doing anything to the x values, these two are from your y values. So if I rearrange this equation now, this is what you should get. I'm going to rearrange it so you can see. This is what you get. If I said minus 5 on both sides, you get y minus 5 equals to negative 2 e to the 3 minus 4x. Agreed? Yeah? And then I divide both sides by negative 2, and this is what I get. I get y minus 5 all over negative 2 equals to e, 3 minus 4x. Now, this is where I'm going to highlight so you can see. I want you to highlight. I'm going to highlight in yellow again, or green. So this is my green. True? That's representing this side. Agreed? Then, in yellow, this is my power, and that's representing the x values over there. Can you see how I'm doing a comparison? What have I changed? E is still there, E is still there. The y is now looking like this. The x, which is used to be this section here, is now that. This is my new x values, okay? And these are my old x values. Okay, so what I'm really saying there is I'm saying this x here, x is equal to, whoops, x is equal to 3 minus 4 x dash, is essentially what I'm trying to say, okay? If you rearrange all this now, you will get x minus 3 equals to negative 4 x dash, therefore x dash is equal to 
x minus 3 over negative 4. Now, if you read that, that's really like saying negative x on 4 plus 3 over 4. Now, if you read that, that's the transformation that you put for your x-coordinates. What have I done? I times it by a quarter, so I quartered it. I reflect it in the y-axis, and I move to the right by 3 and 4. That's what essentially this means. Okay? But we'll work on that for next session, yeah? We'll work on the next session. That's essentially what you're really trying to say. You do the same for Y's. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Dilation of one quarter from the Y. Yeah. We'll do this again uh, next session. Next session.